Oh, this is the day. So I am off. I just confirmed I bought two pregnancy tests from Clicks. Confirmed positive. They are signs. Now, then he took a pill. He inserted that pill right inside my vagina. So I don't know when you had an abortion. When you had a miscarriage, when you had a stillborn, please understand that your baby is growing up in the spirit world. Welcome to my channel. My name is Lerato. So the content of my channel is about fitness. It's about motherhood. So if you're looking for an online friend, why not? I mean, I'm a single parent, so let's just be friends. Anyway, you guys, today's video it is a very, very, very personal. So. I'm gonna speak slowly because this is a diary session instead of me writing in my journal I decided that let me do a diary session into a camera so I don't know how will this session go about but yeah ish. I'm just pouring my heart out into the camera so I invited someone today with us she is here with us in spirit anyway so anyway I am overwhelmed by the presence of my daughter because it is August and the reason that I'm saying this it is because every time I fall pregnant I find out during August the first week of August that's when I'm like I feel nauseated there's just signs of pregnancy so all my kids they are born on April so I think I am ovulating July and then I find out that I am pregnant first week and second week of August so it's August that I think I'll, I'll be like five to six weeks so it's August September October November December January February March April so <sighs> August is a very rather an emotional month for me every year every year so this year I decided you know what I am going to deal with this like in a different route anyway I am mumbling anyway I am mumbling um anyway those who know me personally they know that I am a Christian uh i am a firm believer of african spirituality though i don't practice it but i believe in in tradition i believe i believe in african roots you know um i have so, sinned you guys i have sinned unto god i have disappointed my ancestors those who come before me so they gave me this beautiful gift and what did i do i failed to take responsibility and i rejected the gift i was like back to the sender that's what i did so now my baby is a living soul um my baby is growing in spirit my baby is five years old this year. 
my baby turned five years old, but not in August. This year, by August, the first week of August, that's when I found out that I am pregnant with my baby. But my baby turned five years old in April, together with my other kids. So here is Zino. She is six. So here is Chantel. She is five years old. And here is our baby, Kovi. She is one years old. So I think I'm enough for the introduction. You guys make it cover the yoga jar, jar at an unfrone. So don't mind the solo tapes. And I make it glowing. Anyway, they're distracting me either way. So when I look into the camera, anyway, it is what it is. Um, so here's my story, you guys. Let me start back. So I fell pregnant in 2015 with Zeno. No, I fell pregnant with Zeno 2014. I gave birth to Zeno. 2015 on the 27th of april during xenophobic attack so that is on freedom day hence we call him but that's a nickname hence we call him xeno xenophobia right and then i fell pregnant again august 2015 I think no. I think I found out that I'm pregnant again, August 2015. So that was like May, June, July. I found out August, first week of August. So three months after I gave birth to Zeno, I fell pregnant again. And keep in mind that I um I gave birth to Zeno via C section. It was fetus distress. I gave birth to Zeno at Tony Hospital and then I was rushed to Steve Biko. So, like, imagine my operation had not healed. Once you give birth via C section, you need to take a period of five years or two years in between or three years, correct me. But what I know is that you need to have like a couple of years before you can before you can fall pregnant again because your operation has not yet healed. So you guys, I was not ready. Like I was not ready at all. I was not ready to go through this pregnancy. It was gonna be a very risky emotional you know and my baby daddy is one person that i cannot explain how he is so i'd rather not explain the type of person that he is because he's not here to explain himself but he was adding more stress to my life so i couldn't take like i couldn't i like i couldn't i couldn't so in 2015 i was working at edgar's i was doing a postgrad at unisa you guys and my baby was still very small my baby was still very small i left my baby here at home with my mother and my dad so what were they going to say when i when i'm like mama i am pregnant again and my mom left Limpopo to come live with me in Main Lane um, during the whole pregnancy. She would wait for me every time I would knock off at work because we were working Gadi shift, you know. So uh, back then in Main Lane, there was like a bridge. So it wasn't safe. There were a lot of hobos. Not to call them nyaupes. Back then, there were no nyaupes. They were just hobos. But they were cool. They were not harmful. But you can just imagine, you know. So, I need to pass Cubana. I need to pass a ties. And then pass a red bridge. And then go to the flat. So, our flat is opposite. There was like a construction where they were building. 
um, a casino and all of that and this all these shops so it wasn't safe for me and my baby daddy where was he hmm? he was nowhere to be found you know all he did was just keep on adding more stress into my life more stress into my life more stress so i couldn't handle it like ish you guys as a parent man i know i need to take responsibility but you know falling pregnant you guys you need emotional support like you need emotional support let me the reason that i'm telling you the the location and all of that is not for me to come here and flaunt to you but it's to show you hurry i couldn't do this on my own actually i'm not explaining myself to you but i'm just doing like a diary session like i couldn't you guys once you give birth if you if you are a high risk pregnant patient you need to go to the hospital every two weeks for the whole entire nine months you guys like imagine two weeks and you wake up early in the morning at five o'clock you need to be catching your taxi so now i need to catch the taxi at five o'clock now and then i need to get to town then from town i need to get a taxi another taxi to 20. by the time that i get to 20 it's seven o'clock if it's seven o'clock i'm number 50. people queue very early in, at the clinic they queue very 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 early at three o'clock people are there at the clinic three o'clock four o'clock five o'clock people are already there at the clinic i'm telling you about number one number two so by the time when you get that six o'clock oh, oh just forget so you can imagine the whole entire two weeks and then what about work hmm? what about work because at work it's retail you guys even if you worked at a corporate they wouldn't understand because now they'll be like okay i when now okare or every two weeks now we need to cater for you you just went on maternity and then now you're coming back and then now we need to work around your timetable it's business it's no hard feelings it's business they'll tell you okay sit at home and then take care of your pregnancy and then you lose a job come I have UNISA. There's fees that I need to pay. School fees that I need to pay. I'm doing a postgrad. I just graduated. I just did my degree. Just before I gave birth. I graduated. And then now I need to pursue. And then here I am falling pregnant once again. Like I was so disappointed in myself, you guys. Like I was so disappointed. I wasn't having this. Like the shame of going back home like th this time around it was just gonna be that thing right now you are going back home you are going to take care of your kids and i know for a fact that my dad was not gonna talk to me oh my mother and i believe you and i ooh, let's not even start like yo i believe i i don't know how will she treat me so falling pregnant or while you are pregnant and then they stress you will lose your baby it's not a nice it's not a nice feeling when you're pregnant you need to be stressless you need to be spoiled you need to be taken care of you don't need drama now when i'm pregnant i'm just like drama bye-bye stress bye-bye i move away from drama that's me so i wasn't having it you guys i was gonna lose my job i was gonna quit school i was gonna my parents were gonna be angry at me i wasn't sure if i was going to survive the pregnancy it's either my life were gonna be lost or the, my baby's life i don't know i don't know or maybe it was just fear of the unknown maybe i aborted my baby because of the worldly standards Maybe I am a horrible parent. I don't know. But this thing, young ninja, every year, young ninja. Sometimes I'd look at Zinone, he'd be playing, and then I'm like, ooh, manaka. Gara luka lo umuwe. Gara luka lo
you understand every time it happens i just get to those you know moments where i'm like your baby sister would have been here so i know that when i felt pregnant i dreamt of a baby and my spiritual guides they came to me through my dreams and they gave me the baby's name they told me that your baby is a girl your baby's name is Chantel. so hence i keep on saying baby sister baby girl stuff like that so i knew the gender of my baby so this is the day so i am off i just confirmed i bought two pregnancy tests from clicks confirmed positive they are signs now nah, like my pregnancy just gives away like just like that on the fourth week it gives away so like i'll start by feeling nauseated i would not want to eat certain smells you know smell of the certain smell of food they irritate me i want to vomit and i was vomiting cool fine i get home i'm like fuck i am pregnant i am crying i am weeping i'm on the phone with the baby daddy dude i'm pregnant it's like when i just keep the baby i'm like i ain't having this baby i can't like i can't it's like if you want to kill the baby that's all on you and then yeah so we were not in a good space so yeah and then you guys i went on google i was still using a blackberry now i went on google there i searched abortion clinics in pretoria guess what i found one that was affordable that was like cheap i think it was 1.5 so at that time in august i did not have money so i waited to gather the money that i would make from august going into september so fine um i saved up and then first week of september i went to pretoria i went in town and then on the website ne, i saw this other it's like they showed this medical clinic where there's like stuff. It's like, excuse me, I'm not being racist. Where it's like uh, Chinese people or whatnot. And then there's like a medical doctor, you know, all these white professional stuff. But then something was dodgy when I made the call. When I made that call to confirm the address and all of that, booking my appointment, um guess who answered the call a nigerian guy and i was like um i'm dealing with backstreet abortion i was like anyway what the hell i am not going to marry stops where they're gonna pull my legs and then they do that other type of abortion and then the nurses will be screaming at me shouting at me i'm not doing that so i've heard of what happens when you go to a public facility and you try to terminate so i'm not having that um so i was like mm. so when i got there i did not fill up any form i'm telling you guys i did not fill up any form when i got there there was only one guy working so even before i even get to to the doctor now so the place is in pretoria it's by Van der Wald and um, Van der Wald and Vermeulen. Yeah, Van der Wald and Vermeulen. Now Lilian Ngoni, you guys. I'm not going to work with that. Lilian Ngoni for you, not for me. It's Van der Wald and Vermeulen. So you see that building where there's a lot of women who like to do your hair and all of that right in that building next to shop right by the packing. So he told me, okay, come I'm like, but there, there's just a lot of hairdressers. So, so why am I coming to, to that building? He's like, no, just come. It's number mama. Yo, you guys, I was so scared. I was like, hey, maybe they're going to 
um kidnap me you know there's just a lot of african brothers and sisters in that building i was like hey i'm gonna be kidnapped hmm. but anyway i don't want this baby i can't so by now by september i think i am how many weeks i'm into three months now i think i am let me count five six seven eight nine I think by now I am nine to ten weeks. It's an estimation, right? Hey, my daughter, I get there. But hey, you guys, you know the stages of a baby. So once you are pregnant, this I I did I did not do life science, but to my understanding, is that it's just an embryo. It's like an egg. And then going to the second month or the third month, there's like a heartbeat of a baby. Something like that. So when I got to that dodgy clinic or dodgy doctor, when I got there, shoved the were couches, there was an admin, and then there was like uh, an office space where he's operating patients. There's like a bed and all of that. So I got there, he's like money. I gave him and then he asked me how far I am, how, when did I find out we did not even do a pregnancy test to check the weeks and all of that. He just took my word for it. Cool. Gave him the 1.5 and it's like, okay, come in here and dress your bottom part. I undressed and it's like, okay, put on this gown. It's like a white gown. I put on it, it's like, okay, open your feet. And then I open my legs. I open my legs like this. And then he fingered me. I don't know what he was shaking. And then he went in with two fingers. Yeah, and then he went in with three fingers. Cool. That was a bit painful though. It's like, no, sit still. It's like, Lerato, sit still. It's like, okay, cool. There's no one. You guys, it's just me and him. That time, Krapala Tapelo Mwene. I am so scared that maybe this person might inject me. Maybe I might be unconscious. Here I am with the money and phone. I did not tell. Not even a single soul where I am going to. This could be the end of me. I could find myself maybe prostituting in God knows which country. I kept on praying. I was like, Father God. Father God. I'm committing a sin, but please. Fine. I, and then he's like, feet like that. So it's like I'm sitting on the bed, like this with my, with my legs. And then it's like open. So they open like this, right? No, what am I doing? <laughs> Whatever, but you guys get it. Like I'm lying on the bed. And then my legs are open. What the hell? Yo, my legs are open. And then he took a pill. And he inserted that pill right inside my vagina. So I don't know he inserted into a tube or which part of my eggs or what. I don't know. But he did that with his hands. He did not use anything. He just took a white peel, inserted it into my vagina and then took a second one and put it right inside. And then he told me that I shouldn't eat anything uh, for the next five hours. And then he also gave me another pill which... I had to put here and then with no water and then it would dissolve itself naturally so no drinking of water no drinking of any liquids no eating and there I was crying I'm weeping I'm weeping I'm weeping and then in the car and then in the taxi from town back to mainland i'm calling my baby daddy i'm like i did it he's like what did you do i'm like dude i did that he's like dude are you crazy are you crazy on my birthday 
So I had an abortion on my baby daddy's birthday. I think it was the 11th of September. He's like, wow, what a birthday wish. So till birthday, I am not, I am no longer wishing him a happy birthday because it reminds me of the day that I made an abortion. It reminds me of how how many years my baby could have been by now so each and every year when my baby daddy is growing that's when my daughter as well could be so it's a bittersweet so i don't call him i don't wish him anything i don't celebrate here his birthday he knows so when i got to the flat there i was i locked myself in the bedroom switched off my phone did not watch tv i just cried i wept i wept i wept i prayed i prayed for until i cried myself to sleep after an hour i slept Hey, hey, abortion, abortion. <laughs> you guys, la la la. They must not lie to you. They must tell you how it feels to make an abortion. It is not nice. Hey, batum, diabo. It is not nice. Mm. I wake up to this pains. Ne, kore. You know these pains. There's period pains that are extreme ne? and then there is abortion pains and then there is labor pains so these pains that i'm feeling they are here so it's almost like period pains and almost like labor pains hey you know i had it's so i can just say it's fibroids there were those big clots coming out of me. So at first, I was just feeling pain. I was like, yo, yo, yo. I don't want to lie. Guru, you couldn't tell where the pain is coming from. But here, on your bottom part, on your tummy, on your waist, into your private part, it is burning, it's fire. It's like something is coming out very slow, very slow and painfully so. Extreme pain and very slowly. And then when I checked down, I was bleeding. I was happy, but in pain as well. Because I was like, okay, thank God, it is successful. Hey, you guys, even a pet was not enough. Like, one pet would be filled in a minute. The amount of blood that was coming out of my private part, it was a lot of blood. So, I was busy putting on my pets. I was like, no, I can't keep up. Because you know what? I can't put a pet, you, like if you had a baby, you'd understand. You can't put a pet down there because something needs to go out. You, you want to be free. So now you can't be blocking that thing from coming out, you know, all that blood. Hence, I'm like, it's almost like labor pain. So I took a bucket and then I sat down so that all those claws can just come out. And mind you, I can't drink water. There's no one to massage me. So I'm just sitting on a bucket. I'm busy changing position. I'm lying on my bed. I'm sitting down. I'm crawling. The pains are hitting me. 
the pains are hitting. Good damn black same. The clots. The clots. They were very, very huge. If you know clots as big as fibroids, worse than that, times that, they were this big. They were this big. They were huge. Some were watery. Like, yo, you guys. To put it, I would say, Ukarabe Wichwa Dinama Chamadi. Ukarabe Wichwa Dinama Chamadi. Abortion. Back street abortion. So, I never spoke to anyone about this. Everything that I just read. It's from Facebook about people's experiences. What I know, I know of medical abortions. People who go to public hospitals. I've seen documentaries and uh, yeah, on TV. I've heard stories, but I don't know backstreet abortion stories. I don't know. So this is my story. I'm telling it to you guys. All I can say is that I don't know whether it's safe or not. Till this day, I still have a headache. I have a migraine. So I don't know whether that was the cause because I had that abortion in September. And then in August, <laughs> in August, in August, I started seeing some guy, not my baby daddy, I started seeing some guy, September, we were already, we were already, and by then, I was like, I was not aware of the fact that I need to be cleansed. Um, I need to detox and all of that. But I did tell him. I did confide in him. I told him, Rudud, I did one, two, three, four, five. My new boyfriend, of course, I told him, okay, dude, I did one, two, three, four, five. He's like, okay, thank you for being honest. So now this is what we need to do. We need to cleanse ourselves. We need to detox. We need to do the ceremony. We need to do this. We need to do this. So, yeah. So it kind of helped me because you understand? And myself as well so it is very 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 important so i don't know what a up until how many months can you have an abortion i did it in my first trimester um it was just an embryo there were no heartbeat so i believe um so there were no limbs so there were there was no baby formed so yeah and then I, I went to work everything was normal the following day in the morning um yeah i went to work and those pains they only lasted for like five four to five hours four to five hours because i couldn't drink liquids if i had liquids like warm water, I believe that that blood was just going to flow. It was just going to be flowing. So now, because I did not have anything, it was just clots, 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 fibroids, fibroids, stacks of flesh. So, you guys, hmm. mummies, we are brave. The risk that we take. explained i am a christian i am a firm believer of african spirituality 
I acknowledge my ancestors and those who walk with me. Though I do not practice the traditional route, but I acknowledge them. So, plants, plants, they give us oxygen. Hence, I have bought all these plants behind me. This represents me as Lerato, Ratanang as Zino, Chantal, and Muratua as Kovi. So, um, as I said that I am a Christian, so when you had an abortion, when you had a miscarriage, when you had a stillborn, please understand that your baby is growing up in the spirit world. So you need to acknowledge your baby. As a parent, you need to perform for your child. As a parent, so as a parent, you need to perform a ritual for your child. You need to acknowledge your child and let them know that they are loved and they are cared for and they are also remembered you cannot just move along with your life and then as if your baby never existed in your womb and move on um on both sides of the family from my side, from the daddy's side, that, okay, here is a baby. So, our babies, they are growing in the spirit world. They are watching over us. And if we do not acknowledge them, if we do not acknowledge them, they can destroy us. We will have a lot of misfortunes. You will wonder why a lot of things are happening in your life. And you don't see prosperity. You don't see success. Everything just keeps on blocking. You encounter bad stuff. Everything is accidents. You cannot find a job. Stuff like that. There's no breakthrough. You cannot get married. You know, that, those are just an example. It's because what? You are neglecting your spiritual baby. So a lot of bad things can happen to you. A lot of bad things. So you need to get cleansed. You need to give your baby a name. Your baby exists. Your baby is growing year by year. You need to pray for your child's soul so that her soul may rest in peace. When you pray, you must ask God for forgiveness. You must ask God for forgiveness because we committed a sin. Not because I am a Christian. There are certain rituals that I cannot do. What I did is that I went to church. I confessed my sins to the pastor. Got a muruti. Get really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get hopela tsarer. Arwana kami dumu wokuile. Skatlo bushelej. Hence, when I fell pregnant with Kovi, I was like, no way. I can't do this. Yes, the baby daddy is zero, but why did you have unprotected sex? You know? So I asked for forgiveness. 
every year okay give it a lot so i told myself that every year every august i am gonna mourn my baby i am going to acknowledge my baby hence when i got to pep home i saw this pot plants as like they are my kids together you know so every time when i pray as well i ask my baby soul to rest in peace so that my grandmothers my granddads my family that has passed on to the other side they may be with my child and take care of my baby they must not be like and then when a stranger when a man you're part of our bloodline but we don't know you so you guys now i miss my child and I tried talking to my baby daddy. Anjak ameno. Anjak ameno. Ari, I told you to keep that child. Why did you abort Lerato? I, I was talking to him. I was trying to get him so that we do like a ceremony. Like a mini ceremony. Where me and him would be together and acknowledge our child it's like a mini ritual that i cannot explain here on camera but i feel the need that he needs to be there because he will also encounter misfortunes as i said on both families you understand from my family side from his family side so if it was my baby by myself, I would understand. I would not want to involve him. So he needs to do that. Otherwise, he will encounter misfortunes. So I'm also saying this to you. So if you've had miscarriage, if you've heard an abortion, or you had a stillborn, both parties, the mother and the dead, you guys, you need to be cleansed. You need to name your child. You need to acknowledge your child. You need to pray for your baby's soul to rest in peace. And you also need to ask for forgiveness. I cannot go into details as to the cleansing ceremony because we have different beliefs. And the content of my channel, it is not about that, you guys. You need to understand. The content of my channel, it is not about that. So I cannot come here and be like, okay, and all of that. No. Go and consult Mpoa Badimu. Go and consult um, Gogos Koteni. Go to church. Go pray and ask your spiritual guides on how they must help you to do a ceremony for your child. If you are a Christian and you do not practice the traditional route. But fact is... You need to acknowledge your baby that has passed on to the other side. So, ish, you guys. It pains me. I'm going through therapy right now. Only a few people know of this and I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of hiding. Now my baby exists. Like, so my mom found out the time I was in an ambulance so you know when you are in an ambulance they ask you a lot of questions hey like they want your medical record they want to know your condition so you cannot lie no one so that's how she found out so i'm gonna keep this pot plants here with me well i'm gonna keep them on a window in my bedroom i'm gonna keep them on a window in my bedroom so anyone who questions me i'm gonna tell them the truth i am tired my baby exists i love my child as much as i love my living kids 
and sometimes i'd look at my friends ne? i'd look at my friends i'm like they are very strong because they made a choice of not aborting their kids and now their kids are all grown why didn't i do that why didn't i beg a seller maybe i was a coward i don't know but i like yo get to blame get to blame him anyway that's my story about abortion that's a diary session uh, as i said i'm still healing i'm still going through therapy i'm so busy with the ceremony um yeah I'm so busy with the ceremony. Oof. Anyway, till I see you again. Please don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for the love. And shout out to... All the parents that decided to keep their babies and raise them against all odds. You are very strong women. Anyway, bye-bye.